What's going on guys? Welcome into episode number 24 of the Ask Tony Show. Thank you so much for joining me. As you guys can see, I'm kind of trying to grow a beard. I don't know if I'm succeeding yet, but I'm trying. So hang in here with me. Uh, we got some great questions today. Um, rest in peace, Kobe. This episode dedicated to the great Kobe Bryant, number 24. Uh, let's get right into it. What do I have to do to buy a second home? Okay, so if you want to buy a second property, this is super common. Usually people that buy a first one, they then they want to buy a second one. So I have to give the disclaimer to all you guys that I am not a loan officer. I have to say this every episode because otherwise I get in trouble. I am not a loan officer. So if you have questions about financing, find a loan officer. They can answer those for you, but I'm going to answer them for you in this video anyway. But just so you guys know, I am not a loan officer because um, I guess you guys need to know that. So if you want to buy a second property, the first thing that the bank is going to ask you is what's going to happen to the first property? Um, are you buying the second one to move into the second one or are you buying a second one to use that one as an investment property? So the answer to that question is going to determine how you're going to go about it. If you're going to stay in the in your current home and you want to buy a second property for investment, then you got to use an investment program, which means you're, you're going to have to bring at least 20% down, sometimes 30, depending on the program. But typically you got to bring 20% down to avoid that mortgage insurance because it is an investment property. Now, the more common uh, thing that a lot of people do is they have their home now, they want to rent their current home, and then they want to move into a nicer, larger home by their second one. So if you do that, uh, you got to do a couple of things. Number one, you can't have an FHA loan on your second property. So you're going to have to use conventional, which means you're going to have to have a higher FICO score. Your debt to income ratios are going to be lower. So you're going to qualify for less. And you're also going to have to justify what you're going to do with the first property. So if you're going to rent it, the bank is gonna to wanna to see that you have a lease agreement in place. They wanna see how much you're gonna charge. They're gonna calculate your numbers, all nice. But basically you have to rent this one and justify and prove that it's gonna be rented so that you can qualify for your second one. Uh, it's a great time to do it right now, guys, because rates are so low. So when people start to buy real estate, like I said, they buy one and then they buy two and three and four. Um, so that's kind of the game, but you do have to justify what you're going to do with the first one in order to get the second one. What is the benefit of having a larger down payment? Down payments, uh, they do matter. It's kind of tough. They matter, but they don't really matter too much. Let me explain. So in my opinion, you should do everything you can to bring at least the minimum down payment because we hate down payment assistance programs. I've talked about that before. Watch my videos, there's like 37 on this. I hate down payment assistance programs. I think they're a horrible idea, but that's a different topic for a different day. Um, so I'm of the belief that you should work really hard to bring the minimum, but when it comes to more than the minimum, it doesn't make too much of a difference. So in my opinion, it's either the minimum, like 3.5 or five if you're going conventional, or 20 like either the minimum or 20%, like in between, it doesn't help a whole lot. Uh, just to give you guys an idea, about $10,000 in down payment, in extra down payment, if you will, will drop your uh, home payment about $45. So $10,000 in down payment equals 40 to $50 a month. So it's not anything like crazy. Sometimes people think, oh, if I have an extra $10,000 down, I can drop my payment 200, 300, 400 bucks. It, I mean, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars here. So to the bank, 10 grand is like pocket change. Like they're not too excited about 10 grand, if you will. Uh, so that being said, what I would do, let's say you have an extra $10,000, you have your minimum and you have an extra 10 K, right? What I would do is I would give the minimum I would pay for my closing costs and I would buy interest points. That's what I would do. I wouldn't give it all as down payment. 
all right? I would pay for my own closing costs so I'm more competitive at the offering table. And I would ask my lender if I can buy some points so that my rate can actually go down. You can actually do, if, if your goal is to lower your payment, you can do more damage buying points than you can giving a higher down payment, if you will. So uh, that's kind of my recommendation. Or if you can, give 20% because that 20% you knock off the mortgage insurance and then your payment drastically comes down. But I've talked to people who say, well, I have my minimum down payment, but like I'd like to have like $10,000 more so that my, my payment can go way down. Um, but it doesn't really work like that. So I would strive to have the minimum and then pay for your closing costs if you can. And if you have money left over, then lucky you, buy interest points. Why is it so easy for you to make videos? I've tried to make them myself and it's super hard. Any tips? Making videos, it's actually hard. Like I've been doing it for like six years and when I first started, it was the same. It was really choppy and I had to do like a bunch of takes and I had to like stop and go back and do it again. And so now this show, I 99% of the time, I shoot it just in one take, unless I like sneeze or something or really like get mixed up. There's usually not a lot of editing. Rachel knows this. We just kind of press record and go. Uh, but it does take a lot of practice. It's, it all comes down to practice, number one. So you gotta make a lot of videos. Make videos every day about whatever you want. Just practice speaking and practice getting over the phobia of having the camera in your face. Uh, what happens with a lot of people is they just get nervous. They get nervous, they freeze up. If somebody's watching you, if someone's recording you, there's a camera in your face, there's a big mic, it's kind of intimidating. So they freeze up because of that. And number two, you gotta know what you're talking about. If you don't know what you're talking about, it's gonna be very hard to make videos. Like, if you're not really comfortable with your subject matter, if you're really not an expert, it's gonna show. Like, people can tell. And when videos aren't good or when people aren't good on camera, it's for one of those two reasons. They're either not secure because they don't practice, so they don't have that skill set to speak, or they don't know what they're talking about. So you gotta have both. Become an expert and practice. Become an expert and practice. Practice and become, become an expert. See what I mean? I'm not gonna edit that out. But you get the point. What are the pros and cons of working as a team versus working by yourself? I love my team, and in my opinion, the only way to scale is to work as a team. If you look at any company, and I always say this to agents, and for some reason, real estate is a business where people seem to believe that they can do it on their own, and that that's totally fine. Um, so I'll talk about why I disagree with that, but take any successful company in the world, there is not a single one out there that is successful with one person. Show me. Show me, show me the company that has scaled and that has become successful off of just one person. It does not exist and that also applies to real estate. Like if you really wanna build a real estate company, if you wanna build a business, you can't do it by yourself. Now, if you wanna switch your job and you wanna have a job, sure, you can do a lot of things on your own. You can have a deal here, a deal there. You can do a couple showings, handle a couple transactions and you'll be fine and you'll make a nice little, little living. But you're not an entrepreneur. You don't have a company like that. It's not the same thing. You just switch your day job, if you will. Which again, that's fine and that's the majority of agents. Actually, the majority of agents are part-time anyway. So they're not trying to really build a business and a sustainable company. They're just trying to make some side cash, if you will. That's the majority of agents. But if you really wanna scale, if you wanna have more time freedom, if you wanna actually make something for the long term, you're gonna need a team. You can't do it by yourself. Uh, I experienced this myself. When we were first getting started, I could handle three, four, five, six, seven deals on my own, and we didn't really have a system at first, so I just had like an Excel spreadsheet, and you know some of the other agents in my office kind of did the same thing. But once you start to scale, like it's humanly impossible to keep track of everything. It's humanly impossible to show homes to everybody every day at the same time. Like you just, you're just one person and there's only so many hours in the day, so you can't do it. So now having a team, we have people who specialize in doing showings, people who send our contracts. I mean, you have a network of people that allows you to scale and now we can take on 15 to 20 deals each, you know, on our own 
because we have the structure and we have the team. So um, the benefit is you can do more. I guess the con would be that you have to share your revenue. Like when I have a closing, it, I don't get to take all the money home. I have to share it with my team. So I guess that's like a con, but if you understand it, you know that you're gonna make more money. I mean, I've made so much more money because I have a team than I would have ever made if I was by myself. So that, that part doesn't really bother me too much. Like I wanna share more because the more I share, the more I make um, on the back end. And then if you're by yourself, the benefit is you get to keep the money even though it's less, but it's all for you. Um, so get a team. How do you stay motivated? So motivation is something that I kind of go back and forth on. I think I've talked about this in the past, um, but motivation is something that is tough to find and it's tough to maintain. So I don't really rely too much, I guess, on just traditional motivation. I'm in a position where I just have to do what I have to do. Like when I was first starting out, I did have to motivate myself because I wasn't in a, in a position where I was forced and I'll explain what I mean by that. But I had another job, I was living at home, so I could, if I didn't work one day, like it wasn't that big of a deal, if I had a closing, great, if not, whatever. But now I'm in a position where I guess you could say what keeps me motivated is number one, I have a team, as I talked about in the previous question. So it's not just about me, like I am responsible for the income of other people. I am responsible for other people's financial stability or security, if you will. So. I can't allow myself to just chill because it's not just about me. It's not just about my bank account. There are other people that are relying on me and, and on my partners to get stuff done so that they can pay their bills. So it's not just about me, I have a team. That's number one. Number two, I'm just grateful. Like I'm grateful to be in a position where I can I can reach people, I can help people buy their house. Like it, it, it goes much deeper than just my pockets, if you will. Um, so that motivates me because I know that we have a purpose. I know that what we do is valuable and that it actually helps people. Um, also, I think about my family. I think about my wife and my kid. That also motivates me um, because I want to give them the best life possible. I want to be able to do things with them and give them stuff and travel and visit places. And so um, there's that, that cost money. So in order to be able to do that, I have to do the activities on the daily that are going to make sure that that money will eventually be there, if you will. Um, and the last thing that keeps me motivated, if we're talking about from like a physical perspective, Diet Mountain Dew. What can I say? 